Kotlin doesn't have a concept of a switch statement. Kotlin's switch statement is known as a when. So let's go ahead and create a user to work with real fast. And this user will have a first name of Dawn and the last name of Felker. Now the when statement looks something like this. You say when, and then you provide the value that you're going to evaluate here as the condition, say user.firstName. Say, hey, when the user's first name is equal to something, and each line here will be a condition that we're checking. So when the user's first name is Don, then we want to go ahead and perform some type of action. And we'll put that inside of some curly braces here. And we'll say print LN, say this is Don. And then we can run this. Now, if we run this here, we'll run, and we'll see in the output window that we say this is Don. Now, if for some reason we change this user's name to Dan, of course, this evaluation is not going to run and we're not going to see anything printed out to the screen. So what we can do is also provide a default branch, which is known as an else inside of the when. And we can provide the brackets in here too. print ln. This is not Don. Now, if we run this again, because the user's name is Dan, which I'm sure there's a Dan Felker somewhere, uh, we'll see this is not Don. So the else branch has now executed here. Now, one of the things, uh, you know, and you can put multiple different different things inside of here. So we could do a print line, you know, foobar or do some type of logic or whatever. These are just basically blocks of code that you can do stuff with. Now, one of the challenges that you're going to run into when you first start developing with Kotlin is you're not going to understand how to write a when statement. At least that was my experience. So thankfully, the IDE helps you out a lot here. So you may be familiar with writing something like this user dot first name equal equals Don. And then you may have you know, this, this print line statement here, and then you're going to have an else. And this is very common in all C style languages, which you're probably used to seeing many times now. So if we comment this out, we'll see here that Dan Felker, so we should see this is not Don. Let's run this now. And we'll see this is not Don. If I change this back to Don Felker up top, we'll see that this is Don. So we'll, that condition will be run. Now, Again, I know that I probably want to use a when statement. It's very Kotlin idiomatic to do so. Now you see, as I put my cursor here, we get this little yellow light bulb. You hit Alt to enter or hit this and say, replace if with when. And automatically it rewrote the code for us to a little bit different here. Now, this doesn't look like the one that's down here, yet it does the exact same thing. And what this is basically saying is, hey, is this username, first name equals Don. Now it's going to just say print line. Now notice how there's no brackets here like I have here. But so let's undo what we just did before. If I have multiple statements in here, and I say this is cool, and then I come back up here and say replace the if with the when, the IDE will automatically provide the brackets for us. So if it's a single line statement, what will end up happening is when we replace the if with the when, it will then turn it into a single line in line statement so it's easier to read. But and it's also optimized it here because it says, hey, we don't have to evaluate the when for the else here. So we're just going to throw it in this item here, which also means we could just say uh, this could be Dan. Now, at this point, it's getting kind of redundant. So we say this is Dan. And if we were to run this now, let's run real fast. You're going to see that it's going to say this is Don. Now, if I put in Dan, say this is Dan. And then if I put in this is Dana it's not going to work because this is Dana. So then I can rewrite this. In my opinion, it's a little bit cleaner. I can actually just say, get rid of this stuff here. And what this will do is it'll evaluate when I can put this inside the, the user dot first name. So what this is going to do is only evaluate whatever is inside of the first name variable. So what this is saying is user's first name when it equals Dawn, go ahead and print this out here. When it equals Dan, print this out here. Now, when would you want to not use that? That's a very good example. So you could actually say, well, when the user's first name is Don, then we want to print this as Don. But what if we only want to print it when it's Don Felker? So users.last name equals, you know, uh, excuse me, we want to go over here, user's name equals Don, and user.last name equals Felker. Then at that point, we want to say print this as Don. Otherwise, we don't. So let's go back here and let's change this, you know, again, let's go to Dan, let's go to Don Felker and run this. What you'll see here is it's going to say this is Don. But what happened if we added 
just felk, right? They misspelled whatever and run it again. This is not going to run. It's going to say this is not Don because what this one statement is doing is using this entire line as an evaluation. And again, we can, once it starts getting kind of long and goes after the initial line break, I prefer to put it inside of a print line here. So you're going to start evaluating multiple different conditionals inside of here using this when statement. And then of course you can have a, a fall through as the else at the end. You can mix having blocks of code inside of here, or you can kind of have one line evaluations and statements here, which will then you know evaluate these expressions and print them to the screen. You cannot put multiple ones here on the same line. As soon as you need to do multiple things, you will need to provide a block for that. So that's pretty easy to do. You know, you can just go ahead and provide that. Print L, oops, print LN, and accordingly. And you can put some other stuff inside of here. Print LN, this is, you know, ABC, whatever. And then that's how you can go ahead and use a basic when statement inside of Kotlin. And of course, this can be used with different types of things, such as primitives can be used with, to check different instance types. This is just a conditional, very much like an if. And again, if you don't know how to write the when statement, you can always go back to the if statement, write your if statement, and then go ahead and use the helper inside of IntelliJ, Android Studio, or any other Java IDE that's built by JetBrains to actually have it go ahead and replace your if statement with a when statement.